There it is. There's no man's land. That area in back of my house. Hey again everybody, it's Miguel Tio, the North Country Latino. And today we're gonna go on a snowshoe walk. Just gonna share the trail I take every year. And today's actually the first day that I've done it, this whole year. It took forever for this whole area back here to get buried enough. We were just weren't getting the snow we've been used to. I know where they've been getting it. <laughs> Sorry folks down in the tri-state area. Well you can even see still this top of the weeds back there but it's a lot better than it was. And then it was too cold. So, you know, what can I say? I'm glad to share with you this snowshoe walk today. Now we're back in the field, heading back towards the trail. It was the first time I found this trail. It was Christmas Day oh, about six years ago, first year I was snowshoeing. And it was just like right there before me. People told me about it, but I'd never been back there. And it was easy to find. The weeds, just like these, blazed it right down. Back in, you can see it. We're gonna go up that hill way down. There's how far we've come. You can see all the prints and everything. There's the back of my house. Thank goodness it's a sunny day out. It's just been gray and yuck the last few days. You gotta have some fun in winter. There's gotta be something to it other than just a backdrop of yuck. So get out and enjoy, you know? Well, here's the trail as it is now. <laughs> a lot more blaze than it used to be because they built a driveway back here because there's a house here now. It didn't used to be. You had to kind of come back and find this occasional snowmobile trail that would be here. It would already blaze it through. But it wasn't hard. The driveway only goes so far and then it's not the same path anymore. It's a little narrower and deeper. But hey, at least this is here to give a good trek. Now we're on the part past the house. This is what it used to look like. You can see where the snowmobile trail is pretty much just the only thing that's paved it back here. And let me tell you, before the house went in, when there was a lot more trees back here, not that there's still no love trees, but there were more. You had to really look sometimes and hope you were on the trail, not walking into a swamp or something, just in case you happen to not get it right. Down here at the end is what I call the wood pile. And that's like the first big uh, place where you know you're in the right place. <laughs> that's what I can call it. And there's how far we've come so far. You can see where all the snowmobile trails go and kind of see my footprints. Not as much as it was when it was all bare back here and all there would be was my snowshoe prints. An occasional snowmobile. That's okay. Not that I don't mind people's houses, but I'm glad this hasn't become one of those big developments like some of the areas my family lives in. There used to be a vast area like this and tear down and more houses. Glad to have this land to, to do this on while I can, you know what I'm saying? Here's the wood pile, of course. Most, well, the wood's over here. Some of this stuff's been here for quite a while. Old material, not sure what it's for. Not really sure what all the wood's for too because it just kind of sits there. But it's a benchmark. Tells me I'm almost at the end of this thing until we cross the street and go up the hill. Lots of beautiful pines back here. This is the really cool part. It's like going through a Christmas tree forest. And here's what I mean by untampered un, uh, snow. 
Once upon a time, a snowmobile or two would go through here, but they don't seem to much anymore since the development of the house and more of the blazing of the trail back there. So it's a little deeper, but pretty. You can see the deer have been through here. Smaller animals as well. Probably some bird tracks along it. Flying from branch to branch. Any other winter creatures, if you will, making their way through. Now we've made it through that part. You can see my big old tracks. Here are my snowshoes. Yeah, the modern kind. I have a pair of the antique style, but my new boots are too wide for them. And I don't want to ruin the casings. Here we go, we're going to get a look at the hill. I'm going down the road here to cross over. Yeah, I nicknamed my hill, even though I don't own it. The coolest hill to climb, in snowshoes that is. Now this is really deep. And yeah, I could take the easy way out and follow where the snowmobiles are gone. But what's wrong with the challenge, you know? Gotta get those legs moving this winter. Any kind of exercise is good. Next stop will be the first summit. You can't see it, but there's actually two landings on this hill. So we'll stop at the first one on the way up. Well, we're at the top of the first summit. And as you can see, everything below is starting to get a little smaller. Look at this line of pines. I love the way they make that formation along that. It's so beautiful. That's the cool part about this walk is looking out at everything around. So quiet, so peaceful. Beautiful Saturday afternoon. We're gonna go up further. Here's where we are in terms of the next part. There's the top of it right there. It looks shallow, but believe me, it's not. Looks can be deceiving when all you have in front of you is just a white mass. Well, here we are at the top. I always say from the top of this hill, the trees and the houses around, and even the snow, look like one of those real detailed model train exhibits you see, the Lionel fans. Off of those hills over there going to Lewis County where I teach. It's like the back side of the hill. I'm gonna give you a circular view here. I love this tree panorama too. The way it looks. Just absolutely gorgeous, breathtaking. Gotta take in winter's beauty. At least there's days like this too when there's not storms and you can get out and do it. Or if it's not 20 below. There's the trees we saw earlier in a different view. I wish I could say you could see my house from here. The best view of that is the backyard. And it's kind of like in one of the clearings over there, but it's hard to tell you which one. I want to say it's like in the center. If you can look in the center and find some white. That's part of the yard, but the house is covered by all these trees because that's where we come. We're going to start heading back now, folks. Takes usually oh, about 20 minutes to get here or so. So we'll go back. I know, got to minimize it for YouTube. <clears throat> but I'm glad you could take my first walk with me up the hill, back down. We'll see you on the bottom, see you down the trail. Well, we're back on the trail, back in the paved part. There you can see down again, we walked quite a ways. There's the house in the back, no man's land to go across. There's where the rest of the trail goes, up through to the road. Beautiful skies on a day like this. Even the cloud, the cloud shapes can be fascinating to the eyes, even when the sun isn't at its highest. Well, folks, 
This is Miguel Teal, the North Country Latino, saying thanks for coming me on my first snowshoe walk of the year, on this trail anyways. And hey, what can I tell you? We gotta try to enjoy winter somehow because it's only gonna be here for <laughs> the next number of weeks. So, till next time, get out and do something fun. Don't let the snow get you down.